Welcome to this edition of Call Your Focus. On today's show, we'll take a look at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. A public information plan for the new FEMA flood maps is put into action. And the 60% design plans are approved for the Gordon River Greenway Park. I'm Troy Miller. We'll cover these stories and more next on Call Your Focus. Stay tuned. Whether reporting on the latest news stories or hot issues, taking a look at county government services, or announcing what's happening around the county, this is Call Your Focus, bringing government home. At the recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, the commissioners approved a public information plan for the adoption of the new FEMA Digital Flood Insurance Rate Maps, or DFIRMS. The county is about to receive a letter of final determination from FEMA, which gives the county six months to adopt the revised flood insurance maps. The Growth Management Division will be working with contractors and builders to make sure they are aware of the impact the adoption of the new flood maps will have on their building permits. When you submit an actual building permit application, you look at the, the flood insurance maps that are approved at that time. The fact that they're not approved yet, you would fall under the prior flood insurance or flood, flood elevations. But it's important to note, it's not the day you submit, it's the day you approved that's relevant towards the base flood elevation. So we have to let our contractors know early that the new maps are coming in, the effective date is March 30th, so they can submit their plans with the new information so they're not caught up in that time, time delay, uh, delay or the lag. In addition to the two revised basins, the county will continue to have 10 other flood basins reviewed by FEMA with the more recent 2010 LIDAR maps. But that process could take another 18 months. It is important that you get informed about the new flood maps because of their impact they will have on your property. Public meetings will be scheduled in the two DFIRM basins that were revised following the county's appeal to FEMA. Now, for more information on the new DFIRMs, contact Robert Wiley at 252-5858 or go to callyourgov.net for more information. The board directed staff to seek an opinion from the Florida Attorney General's office to see if it is legal to re prepay Florida Power and Light $1.8 million from the Vanderbilt Beach MSTU for phase one of the project to convert overhead utility lines to underground within the Vanderbilt Beach MSTU. Florida Power and Light requires the funds up front, but the clerk's office says it does not have the legal authority to make the prepayment. The first phase covers an area including Gulf Shore Drive between Vanderbilt Beach Road and Blue Bill Avenue, and Seabreeze Avenue and Channel Drive and Bayview Avenue. FPL estimates the entire cost of the project to be $6.6 million. After a staff presentation, the board approved a recommendation to accept the 60% design plans for the Gordon River Greenway Park. A neighborhood information meeting was held on October 19th where the public made suggestions that included fences, lighting, emergency response, and operating hours. The park will offer great opportunities for folks to enjoy one of the most beautiful areas in all of Southwest Florida. The Gordon River Greenway is a 124 acre parcel that was purchased during the time that we um, purchased the land under the zoo and what we're planning to do with that um, is to provide an access to that facility for mainly biking, rollerblading, um, walking, that kind of thing. It's more of an access park so it'll have some uh, parking, restrooms, pavilions, shade sh structures, boardwalks, bridges, um, a little fishing area, a kayak and a canoe launch facility. Um, so a, a number of those kinds of amenities, which is a little more passive, yet will take you through some, some very interesting parts of that site. The site has got a gopher tortoise uh, preserve as well as a wetland area and allow the public to have access into both of those um, uh, habitats. The next phase of the project will be to get the 90% design completion phase. If all goes as planned, construction should begin in mid-2012 and will be completed in early 2013. The board heard a presentation from Bayshore Gateway Triangle CRA Director David Jackson on the projects, programs, and activities in the Bayshore Gateway Triangle CRA. Residents and business owners also spoke of the great progress made in their neighborhood. District 1 Commissioner Donna Fiala had this to say. I'm proud of the Bayshore area. I'm proud of the Triangle. And look at some of the things that are being created. I mean, like the Botanical Garden, for instance. No other place in southwest Florida 
has a botanical garden, and we do, and, and, and it's an outstanding place. And Hamilton Harbor, what a wonderful place Hamilton Harbor is. The CRA, of course, is at the base of this. The MSTU, those, those people are paying their own way to beautify their area. They're not asking for any tax dollars from another soul. They've done it all by themselves, and that's another thing to be very proud of. Um, we have a shining star on the horizon in the Bayshore area, and that's the Bayshore Cultural and Performing Arts Center that wants to build a place for our local people to perform and display their art. And I wish them so much success because their success will be another success for Bayshore. For more information on the Bayshore Gateway Triangle CRA, go to bgtcra.com. The board received an assessment on ways to improve domestic animal services enforcement operations, an assessment team that included a representative from the Sheriff's Office, Palm Beach County's Animal Control Office, and an animal welfare consultant. DAS Director Amanda Townsend says the recommendations were in two areas. A one-page bulleted list of uh, changes that we can make to improve our enforcement operations and about half of those had to do with systems we can put in place to make sure that the people in the field are really being consistent, that we have uniformity um, uh, between and among our different officers and the way they respond to calls for service. And then another uh, sort of set of recommendations that they made had to do with changes that we can make in our policies to allow us in some sort of cases is to free up some resources, concentrate on some, uh, some more severe cases and that sort of thing. Um, really kind of more policy uh, level kind of recommendations that we can implement in the future um, to improve our service. The Domestic Animal Services Advisory Board met on November 15th to consider the report and other options. A revised animal control ordinance is expected to be back to the BCC for consideration in January. The board accepted ownership of a brand new $1.3 million Panther and Wildlife Crossing funded by CityGate Development as mitigation for its business park near Collier Boulevard and I-75. This location about three miles west of the Hendry County line is an area of high Panther activity. The county will be maintaining the crossing at a cost of $8,000 per year since it is in the county right of way. The commissioners accepted the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for fiscal year 2011 from the Government Finance Officers Association, which was presented to the Office of Management and Budget. Mark Isaacson, Director of Corporate Financial and Management Services, and the entire staff was on hand to receive the honor. We here at Call Your Focus pass on our congratulations on this impressive distinction. The Collier County Business of the Month for November is the Inn on Fifth Avenue. Bill McCabe and Kathy Christopher were on hand to accept the award and say they were honored to be recognized by the board and the Chamber of Commerce. Congratulations to the entire staff at the Inn on 5th, the Collier County November Business of the Month. Well, it's time for a break. When we come back, another road improvement groundbreaking, and we are there to see the dirt fly. And early voting dates are set. We'll give you the info you need to cast your ballot early. All of that and more when Collier Focus continues. Welcome back to Call Your Focus. On October 31st, the county ceremoniously broke ground on one of the last remaining major transportation projects. The county's Collier Boulevard project from Davis Boulevard to the Golden Gate Main Canal has been merged with a project designed by the Florida Department of Transportation on Davis Boulevard from west of Radio Road to Collier Boulevard. The Collier Boulevard portion is one mile long and is being widened from four to eight lanes with street lights and on-road bike lanes on both sides of the roadway. Commissioner Jim Coletta says this project is badly needed. This has been an important objective for many, many years for the Collier County Commission, going way back, 10 years probably. We've always recognized this as a congested area and a congested intersection between 951 and Davis. But we were never able to quite get there because of the fact that state ownership of the roads, trying to bring down funds from different directions to bring them all together. And it's only recently that we were able to put the magic together in a way that's going to make it work. And we're finally going to get this project underway. And when this is done, I, I don't know what's left in Collier County other than the Everglades interchange on I-75 that has to be built. Collier County is providing the construction funds with an agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation to provide reimbursement of up to $20 million 
starting in fiscal year 2012. Construction is expected to be completed in about two and a half years. Commissioner Jim Coletta recently announced that the 90-acre Big Jim Bass Lake, located in his district east of Immokalee Road and north of Oilwell Road, is that much closer to being accessible to public fishing thanks to a gift to Collier County from an adjacent canal this month. Unofficially named Big Jim Bass Lake, the fishing spot will be part of the Collier County Big Corkscrew Island Regional Park, which is now in the planning stages. The canal part of the Orange Tree Planned Unit Development, PUD, was donated to Collier County on October 11, 2011, by Roberto Bolt. Big Jim Bass Lake, part of the Orange Blossom Ranch PUD, was donated to the county in 2009. The lake is not quite open yet, but we will let you know when it's time to bait those hooks and cast a line in Big Jim Bass Lake. The Department of State made its official decision for Florida's five pre-clearance counties to conduct early voting for the January 31st 2012 presidential preference primary election. To continue the previous schedule with the start of the early voting 15 days before election day. Now that means in Collier County, early voting will begin on January 16th and end on January 28th and will be offered Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eligible Collier County voters ready to cast their ballot early for the January 31st, 2012 election may do so at any one of the following seven early voting locations. Everglades City Hall, 102 Northeast Copeland Avenue, Naples City Hall, 735 8th Street South, the Supervisor of Elections Office in the Government Complex at 3295 Tamami Trail East, Marco Island Library at 210 South Heathwood Drive, the Golden Gate Library at 2436 Lucerne Road, Library Headquarters, which is located at 2385 Orange Blossom Drive, and the Immokalee Library, 417 North 1st Street. Now, eligible voters are reminded to bring a current photo and signature identification to the polls. For more information, visit the website callyourvotes.com or contact the Supervisor of Elections Office at 252-8450. Now let's take a look at some upcoming Collier County Government meetings. The following meetings are all held in the board meeting room on the third floor of the main administration building, 3299 Tamiami Trail East at the Collier County Government Center unless otherwise indicated. On Thursday, December 1st at 9 a.m., the Planning Commission will again be in regular session. The Code Enforcement Officer of the Special Magistrate will meet on Friday, December 2nd at 9 a.m. The Environmental Advisory Council will meet on Wednesday, December 7th at 9 a.m. And on Tuesday, December 13th at 9 a.m., the Board of County Commissioners will hold their last meeting of 2011. Now, for more information on Collier County Government or to inquire about other meetings that have been scheduled since the taping of this program, contact the Communication and Customer Relations Department at 252-8848 or via email troymiller at colliergov.net. You can also click on our website at colliergov.net for more information. Welcome back to Collier Focus. Now let's take a look at some of the many fun and interesting programs being offered through the Collier County Parks and Recreation Department. After School Adventures offers parents a safe and fun environment for their children when school is not in session. The program is for children from ages 5 to 12 and runs weekdays from 2.40 p.m. to 6 p.m. from January 2nd to June 2nd. The program is available at East Naples, Immokalee, Max Hass, Veterans, and Vineyards Community Parks and the Golden Gate Community Center. For more information, call 252-4000. The Golden Gate Aquatic Facility offers youth aquatic lessons for children in five different levels based on their current abilities. There are several options for dates and times, so if you want more information on schedules and costs, call the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility at 353-7128. If you have arthritis and are looking for a low or no impact exercise, then the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility has the answer for you. Instructors for these classes are all trained by the Arthritis Foundation, and the exercises are specifically designed to give you a good workout with little or no joint impact. Classes are Fridays and Tuesdays from 11 a.m. until noon and are $5 each. If you want more information on the arthritis exercise class, call the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility at 353-7128. If you are interested in quilting, then the Naples Quilting Club is the place for you. 
They meet every Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the East Naples Community Park, and the cost is free. If you feel like trying the tango, then sign up for ballroom dancing classes. This course will introduce and review a new dance each week, including the foxtrot, the tango, the rumba, and swing dancing. So put on your dancing shoes and meet at East Naples Community Park on Fridays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The cost is $5 per class. Learn how to be the best babysitter at Babysitting Boot Camp. The course is designed to teach all the basics in babysitting, including CPR and first aid training. Participants must be 11 years old and must attend all classes. For more information and costs, call 252-4000. If you're having trouble controlling your canine, then basic dog obedience may be just what you need. Using consistency, repetition, and positive reinforcement, this course helps owners learn how to communicate with their trusted companions. You will also learn handling skills, basic obedience, cues, and verbal commands. Basic dog obedience is for dogs 4 months to 10 years old. The class meets on Saturdays from 9 to 10 a.m. at Veterans Community Park. For cost information, call 252-4000. There's a whole lot more to do in Collier County, not mentioned here on Collier Focus. For information regarding the location of county parks and other activities, contact the Parks and Recreation Department at 252-4000 or the Collier County Communication and Customer Relations Office at 252-8848. That's all the time we have on this edition of Call Your Focus. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.